Britain's motor industry is one of the country's economic success stories, employing more than 800,000 and making up 12% of exports, according to the industry's trade body. As far as our sector was concerned, we've been incredibly successful, uh, attracted over £10 billion of investment in, in UK uh, automotive production over the last three or four years. The latest manufacturing figures reflect that, with a record rise in production up to the point when Britain voted to quit the European Union. Now, confidence in an industry worth more than $90 billion has switched to uncertainty over Britain's post-Brexit European relationship. It is our biggest market. It's tariff-free access. Um, there's no administration about moving parts or goods in and out of Europe. Um, plus, uh, if you look at the industry, we do have a skill shortage and the ability to bring in talent from Europe and indeed further afield is, you know, is fundamental to the effective operation of the sector. GlaxoSmithKline, Britain's biggest pharmaceutical company, has signalled confidence in Britain with $350 million of new investment. London City Airport is spending $450 million. But even with unexpectedly good economic growth figures from the UK's Office of National Statistics in the three months before Brexit, Britain's finance minister talks of challenge. Well, these second quarter figures are stronger than uh, people expected. And I think what they tell us is that the UK economy is fundamentally strong as we go into the challenge that we face uh, ahead. That gives us the tools and the scope to respond as the economy requires. Next week, the Bank of England will announce what measures it needs to face that challenge. The government and the Bank of England both face the same problem. Hard economic facts are short on the ground. The only post-Brexit reality is uncertainty. Richard Bestick, CCTV, London.